All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Definitely appreciate the support. You know, I probably have around 40 or 50 videos that um, I have the film on, but I haven't commentated on. So th those are long, <clears throat> long lost. And this is one that I recorded. And, you know, I don't remember why I recorded this. So I'm just going to go ahead and commentate over it. Maybe I ran into some interesting scenarios in the game. Um, nothing's real interesting about that. I'm not a big fan of uh, being able to control kickoff returns. If it were up to me, you guys, special teams would be uncontrollable. What I mean by that is you would just pick kickoff middle, right or left. That's it. And then the computer would deal with that, right? Every, every now and then you may get a touchdown every now and then there may be a fumble but no player on on both sides would be able to control that and the reason why i would do that is because it would take out some of the randomness in games and during that time that would allow you to set up audibles during that time i would allow you know you should be able to be given stats about your opponent what they like to do what they don't like to do maybe what type of formations they favor etc these are things that we are not privy to because we're playing random opponents online but in real life when you're playing against an opponent you have plenty of film and information on the opposing team we're just not given the ability to do that online so that would provide some opportunity in time while the kickoff is going on you would be able to go over that also with field goals i would take that out of the game you would still pick field goal kick you would still pick field goal block. You could do the fake field goal if, if you want, but you're just calling the play and then it just takes care of itself. During that time, you can go over what they ran during that drive, what worked during that drive. You would be able to watch the replay, you know, because that's what players do on the sideline. They're able to, I think they have iPads and everything else to go over what happened during that drive. I think that would be a little bit more interactive in regards to the strategy of, of the game of football as opposed to. And then on top of that, you get players. It's just, oh man, I'm starting this game off with, with a rant. How many times have you played against a guy who does onside kick every single down, and he's figured out a way to manipulate the coding of the game to where he just gets the onside kick 80% of the time? Okay, there's nothing ethical about that. There's nothing reasonable about that. There is no strategy in on, on, uh, onside kicking, guys. There is no strategy in that, okay? It's just luck. That's really what it is. Yeah, you know, you can, the kicker can kick it a certain way and he's really good at it and all that. But at the end of the day, onside kicking, kicking is luck. So when you run across a player who gets it 80% of the time, he's surpassed the luck factor because he's found a way to break the coding of the game of, of, of Madden, okay? So to alleviate that, you take that out of the game. Well, why is that in the game? You shouldn't be able to do any of that. And during that time, we can do, as I stated. I have a feeling I'm not going to upload this this uh, recording. <laughs> but let's see what happens. So anyways, um, let's see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I made a video on this. I'm playing cover three zone. And um, I switched the responsibility of the corner and the second defender in. So as opposed to you playing outer third, I just want you to play the flat. And then I'm going to take the outer third because I play it a lot better from this position and uh, they played a flat a lot better than the curl flat right so that's my whole point on that go watch my video titled cover three switch I think that's what it's called so I'm traveling upfield and he throws to the outside so you know we're, we're fine with that that's a very narrow window to fit the ball in he goes bunch wide flex so let's see what I decide to come up with. I come out with cover nine, so I might be playing sort, or I could be playing Pentagon, or I have a pressure package that I utilize. Okay, so I think I'm doing the pressure package. So this is sort. We're playing sort on this side, but we're bringing the corner on the back side and man-to-man. -man. Um, I believe I'll probably drop that video first. I believe it's dime two three sort corner cat. So definitely go watch that video. I just didn't have enough time to mug this gap. If you watch that video, you know that's what I'm trying to do. But of course, we get a quick snapper. So now I just have to match the final number three. And, oh, okay, so now I see why I'm up. <laughs> I recorded this game. I probably had a pretty good game. But look how we got the pressure in there. Now, 
if this guy was aligned out here, then we wouldn't have to manually man up this defender on him because... I'm sorry, yes we would. Yes we would. I'm thinking about something else. We, we don't have to man uh, this guy on this guy. And in that video, Dime 2 3 Sort Corner Cat, I said you don't have to man up this guy on the, the running back. And it may seem trivial. You may say, well, why not just do it anyways? And I said in that video because you shave off precious uh, precious time that your opposing player will take away from you. You see how he quick snaps the ball? Maybe I would have had enough time to just mug this gap as this player if I just avoided manning him up on the, the running back, right? Little things like that is important. It could be the difference between a sack, fumble, or interception. So anyways, our corner coming scot-free. And we get a turnover. So we'll just move this thing along, see what happens. He goes Trey Y flex. Um, I run the Baltimore defensive playbook. And whenever I get Trey Y flex, I run this particular defensive formation. Okay, and I love it. It's called nickel triple. I love it because it's very good against uh, inside zone. Like traditionally, when you run a particular coverage, a defensive formation, a lot of times they run like the over front where the tight end is here. And I believe, how do they have it? They have the one, the three, this guy out here, and this guy out here. So he's not there, right? I'm sorry. The one is here. And it's just so much easier for them to run inside zone because they just get a double team on this guy. He pins him and then he rolls off and gets to the second level, right? And if you're wondering why that is, I believe when it comes to the front, it's set according to the running strength of the formation. You have, okay, so you have a running strength of the formation and you have a passing strength of the formation. And that's what's very intricate about trips tight end flex this is one of the reasons why it causes a lot of problems usually a lot of times like if you run i formation the running strength of the formation and the passing strength of the formation is on the same side right like you have the tight end you have him full back back quarterback right and then you have this guy over here right well the passing strength of the formation is over here because you have one two okay but the running strength of the formation is to the right as well right offensive line tight end so you know the front sets to the running strength of the formation if you run under then the three technique would be over here if you run over then the three technique is towards the tight end the one would be on the other side okay hope i didn't flip that well with tris tight end flex let's just say this guy was in line here the running strength of the formation technically i believe so hopefully i'm not wrong on this is on this side of the field but the passing strength of the formation is over here. And that's what's most interesting about that. Okay, I hope I didn't flip that. Okay. That's based upon something I read maybe eight years ago. It just came to me now. Okay. But usually when you run this, uh, a formation, when they're setting like the over front to the tight end, it, it's just, I don't like the, because you're only, the one problem about this formation is you are limited in your ability to run the ball. You don't have all types of runs. You don't have a lot of trap, wham, outside zone, and all that type of stuff. And you're forced really to run to one side. That's what's one of the weaknesses of this formation. Okay, yeah, you can run counter to this side, but it's just not as fluent as um, other formations. But, you know, so it doesn't make any sense to run a front that's weak against some of the limited amount of types of runs that they can run, right? So that's why I like to run nickel triple here to where you really can't get a double team at the point of attack and it kind of frees up the second level to make a play on the backer uh on the running back jeez i talk too much it's bad i like to run uh the cop check uh go watch my video on the cop check in that video i didn't know that you can actually simulate it i just showed you what the cop check is and i remember saying in that video if you could simulate it you would have to call cover six but I couldn't figure out how to do it. And then um, another channel figured out a way to do it. All you do is you man up this defender on the back 
and then you use this player and there's there's rules attached to what you need to do so basically what happens is if this guy goes inside what's beautiful about it is you're not responsible for well you know i won't go over that i'll have to make a video on that because uh this is not looking too well right now so anyways i saw the tight end going uh, up the field i tried to top the route and that's just completely my fault i would say you know i'm pretty weak in the user department usually you know i'm not really bad but i've noticed lately i've been playing pretty horribly and there's another one right i think i was supposed to hold the seam a lot longer than i did there's no need for me to overtake this so soon but he just made a great play because if i assume if i would have took the seam up the field he would have just ripped it into that post and uh that's one of the things i don't like about post defenders and cover one and cover three that safety they play it way too conservatively right like i know you're supposed to be conservative when you're playing those type of coverage as the deep middle safety but i would like for them to be a little bit more aggressive than how they are coded into the game right here i can tell it's two man so okay i this is the play i always come out in first and i'm probably going to attack here snap the ball up oh, got him Go watch my video on Z Shallow Cross. I believe I have a video on that. No huddle. So he audibles out. I really don't know what that is. So okay, that makes sense. That's why I checked into the run. We can get a double team here. Peel off and get him. And we're not blocking him. I have a video on this play as well. If he steps in at all, then we can throw this. So let's see what I did. Okay. Most of the time when he's the user and they see this action, they're going to step inside. I would imagine that I threw this. I didn't. I that, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Maybe him standing there kind of made me a little bit nervous on that, but that was a mistake. I should have threw that. Second and 13. He's in two-man again. Is he going to change? No, so I checked into my other two-man beating play. I have a video on this. PA wide receiver wheel, I believe it's called. Snap. Okay, he's not open. So now you get your eyes over here. He's not open. So now you got to go there. And we get sacked. So I, I, I imagine what happened. I think whenever you run play action and they press the pass commit, these guys rush up field a lot more aggressively and they really don't pin inside due to the play action. I think that's what happens. So good play by him. He gets a sack, third and 18, not an ideal situation. I check into uh, my dig play. I don't have a video on this, but basically the reads is one to two to three, and we have stuff we can do on the backside. I usually call this when I don't know what the defense is, so that's where I check into more progression read type stuff. One, don't like it. Two, don't like it. Three, like it. Fourth and two. We're going to go for it. Looks like two men. Okay, I'm checking into the slout. Yep. So I have a video on the slout concept. A two-man beating concept with these two receivers on the outside. Oh, there it is. Mistake. What was the mistake there? Why did I record this video? This is horrible. I pressed the X button like a dummy right and you know what I probably did it because I just want the first down but had I have pressed uh, square that's a touchdown right so I don't know what he did with his safeties because they are just widened to hell here but this was a touchdown so yeah it's funny you see three for three and all that and I think I'm playing like garbage right it's horrible this looks like a cover zero right the way the way they moved into that so yeah i'm checking into my cover zero attack you guys have seen a video on this it is cover zero slight move in the pocket <laughs> i forgot to switch 
Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison. Usually I have Wayne on the left and Marvin Harrison to the right. That's what Peyton Manning used, that's how they used to play it. I like Reggie w Wayne running the uh, post pattern a lot more than Harrison. But we just got unlucky there. He dropped the ball. It's real frustrating when you dial up a play like that against cover zero and you barely miss it because when that happens, they don't want to call cover zero anymore, right? Some people hate dealing with cover zero. You need to get to the point to where you want people to play cover zero against you, all right? Because when, when you get in that mode and you're able to attack it, people will stop blitzing you because they're afraid of the big play, right? There's a reason why people did not want to blitz Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. They will hurt you, right? I mean, that's the, it, should, it should feel risky for your opponent to blitz you. If it doesn't, then your passing attack needs some work, right? Either that or, or they're doing something to manipulate the game to where I won't get into that. So here I'm trying to get into that blitz again. And um, I believe our our safety just got beat. He's playing from top down. That's a hard route to defend from that depth as a safety. So that's fine. Nice play by my opponent. He goes a slot. So I go nickel 3-3 three, three odd. I made a video. I wonder if I'm going to drop that first on dollar in personnel groupings. So this is what I mean. Against this, if you want to match up across the board, you would play like 4-3 or 3-4, your base stuff, okay? Because that's where you would get linebackers on tight ends and backs. You would get corners on wide receivers, right? There's a reason why you don't want to play dollar against something like this, in theory, okay? But this is where I'm going to play nickel. So nickel is where two backers, five defensive backs four defensive linemen we'll just we'll just say four alignment oh no no nickel three three odd so three d linemen three backers and then five defensive backs they're gonna have two tight ends so they would fit here one back so i'm off here but i do this for a reason and then two wide receivers here. Two of these guys are safety, so I'm going to put three defensive backs. So what I'm trying to show here is you're going to have one defensive back out of place here where he may be matched up against the tight end. Okay? And this is what I call either you one up or one down. I know it's a stupid phrase. Okay? So if they come out in I formation and you come out in 4-3, then you're even. However, if you come out in nickel against I formation, then you're playing one up. In other words, you're going to have a nickel defender who may potentially be matched up against a tight end or a back, right? Okay, there's advantages to that. The advantage is if they throw it, well, you have a nickel against a tight end as opposed to a receiver or a nickel defending a back running a route. And obviously the... the Defensive back will be a lot better in space defending him. The disadvantage to that is, well, if they run the ball and you're forced to def defend in the, in the box, you're going to have that small little corner having to have to get his hands dirty in the box, and that could be a problem, right? Now, if you, you can two up, that's where you're playing dime against like I formation, and that's something I don't ever do, right? Because now you get two defensive backs who will be matched up in the box against tight ends and that's where you run into a, a lot of different issues. Now, one down would be something where the opposing team comes out in four wide receivers, and then you come out in nickel, right? What's the problem with that? Well, now you have a linebacker matched up against a wide receiver, okay? Or maybe they come out in three wide receivers, one tight end, one back, like a single back formation with a slot receiver. One down would be, well, I'm gonna come out in four three or three four. Now you got a linebacker matched up against a wide receiver, okay? So what would be the advantage of doing that? Well, if they're going to come out in... I'm so bad at this, guys. One, two, offensive line, tight end, one, and then you got the quarterback in the back, right? So there's a single back type formation, right? And you decide off defensive lineman, you're going to come out in the 4-3. So... 
linebacker, 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 corner, corner, safety, safety. All right. Well, this is you one down. You didn't you didn't match the personnel. Matching the personnel would be to come out in nickel because you would have a corner here matched up against the wide receiver. But you one down it. You came out in base personnel. And what's the problem? Now you have a linebacker in space against a wide receiver. That is a mismatch in favor of the offense if they throw the ball. However, if they run the ball, this is an advantage for you because you have a bigger player and this guy is going to have to be involved with blocking you. And that's a matchup advantage in your favor, right? So now I, I hope you can see where I'm coming from. There's, there's a point where, hey, I want to one down this guy because he comes out in single back with a wide receiver in the slot and he loves to run the ball 80% of the time from that. Well, I'm going to come out in 4-3, right? So my linebacker can just dominate that wide receiver on the outside and we have an advantage on the edge. Or I may one up a lot. I do this a lot too, where I notice a guy comes out in I formation or three tight ends and he's always throwing it from that formation. That's when, okay, I'll come out in nickel or dime. And now I have an advantage in the passing game because you got three tight ends going up the field and I got defensive backs all matching them, right? I'm pretty bad. This is an example where I almost never like to base uh, a line, but I, I found I actually love doing it when I'm trying to blitz because I like to disguise the fact that I'm coming from depth and it, it surprises a lot of people and we do get a lot of big plays while doing that. Here I'm probably playing the cover three sky switch deal. I am. He tries to make a play. We didn't get there. I'm doing it again. And I think my opponent is just rushing his throws. Good for me. So here, usually when I see this, I'm playing cover two match. So I imagine that that's what I'm doing. But I threw in a wrinkle. So this is cover two match, but we're kind of going to run a creeper blitz with it. So I take the middle player and I blitz him. And what that does is, because he's not in a mid-read, these guys will match on the back end. I always turn these guys to soft squats here in cover two match. But we need someone to match the final number three. So I'm going to take a defensive end or someone who's supposed to rush from the first level and match the final number three. So go watch my video on uh, creeper blitzes and you'll get a little bit more acclimated with what it is designed to do. You can run it from any shell coverage. And I think I have a video on exotic cover two blitzes as well where I go into detail about this. Right. So that was my plan here. Fourth and ten is probably probably why I chose to do that. And as you see, we matched up the field and cover two match and we got an interception okay this is cover zero blitz <clears throat> so I, I gotta tell you when guys play against me like I'm the most strong when you don't disguise coverage okay it's, it's almost like stealing money right single high so I check the curl flat like offensively, I, I feel like unstoppable when I, when you don't disguise coverage. The problem with Mutt is everyone stays in base line all game, right? So you can't, you're not really, you can't really read the defense pre-snap. What I don't like about Madden in that regard is the risk reward for base aligning is not in line with the way it should be. There there are disadvantages for disguising coverage, people being out of position. But you're not able to, you're not, you can't be punished to the degree that you should when it comes to disguising coverage, right? People just come out and base a line all day and they're fine. It's one thing I don't like about Madden, but it is what it is. Snap the ball. Okay, I'm reading this player the whole time. I already knew I was doing this. I could tell. He determines where I'm going to go with the ball. Go watch my video on the Hank passing concept. I go over this in single high. So when he branches out like that i knew i was going there i probably just wanted to wait so he can kind of get outside a little bit more you can see on a simple little curl pattern a flat pattern um we got a first down and a big play we started at the one yard line okay i can tell right here that this is cover three cloud okay for whatever reason the game has it to where these guys stack each other in cover three cloud it's so stupid but it is what it is 
And I think what he probably did was base a line to get the safety back to where he's supposed to be. But I already know the coverage now. I know that you're rolling this way. And um, this guy's the flat. Hook to curl. Hook to curl. Curl flat, right? So one way you can attack this is curl flat. See if I did that. I did, right? So I could just read this player here. All right, I'm going to the flat. I can tell you right now. Hopefully I'm not wrong because I would look stupid. Yep, that's where I go. Simple little flat pattern. We pick up like 20, 15 yards. Okay, this looks like cover six maybe. I'm not really sure. No, but then he audibled out. I imagine I probably ran. I did. All right, so since it's a soft box and I don't know what's going on in the back end, I decided to run, and while I'm running, I could look at the safeties during the run to see how they rotate, and that will tell me what this alignment, shift, and all that, what this actually was. It looks like, I don't know what he's doing. That's annoying, too. I, I ran into guys. I think they key off on, hey, this guy knows what I'm doing. So you get the kind of like corny stuff where they just audible back and forth. Like, not, he wasn't as bad, but... I mean, literally back and forth, back and forth, where the players are just moving. It's just, it's stupid. I mean, it is what it is. So I don't know what he's doing there. So it looked like a, it looked like he was trying to roll to the post. And he was rolling to the post. So maybe that was cover three cloud. <clears throat> All right, that's cover zero blitz. That is cover zero blitz. However, the way he moved like that... <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I guess I was just determined that this is cover zero blitz. Oh, I had this play called in. <clears throat> I never called this play. And this was by accident. I wanted the wide receiver post. And then I noticed I got this instead. And I was pissed. I'm like, oh, great. And this is where sometimes I may make a mistake and throw an interception. Because I'm running a play that I... Usually I could run a play I, I've never ran before. I could tell by the routes what, where I should look, how it should develop, and all that. This is a play that really doesn't make any sense, right? I think we're running against the one coverage it would be good against, cover zero. <laughs> so that's kind of funny, right? You would want to, with him off, probably throw this hitch. And I just don't know how this route really runs. I, I had a video on this play. I, I remember we run the whip out, out. And this is like the fourth read against cover four. Uh, I'm kind of a nerd for me to remember that. That's kind of sad. But let's just, so I kind of know how the route runs. I think I threw that too. Yeah, so he actually ended up in some type of zone, I think, on the back end. And he's going to curl right into this window. So I kind of lucked out there. I mean... Three routes going against like seven in coverage, and he turns into the void there, which is great. So, of course, running inside zone against a lot of players, they have these corny little, you know, I, you know. I'm not knocking anybody that plays mud or anything like that. It's it, anytime I say corny stuff, I'm really knocking the developers, but it's mud, so I can't. I mean, who am I to complain? This is what they. I just, you know, the whole Pikachu Pokemon ability stuff. It's just. I don't know, man. Like, if I really wanted to, if I really wanted to, guys, I can tell you right now. What I would do, you could run a nickel wide. Like a, a wide nine defense. Go to your abilities and put inside, like, whatever the, the abilities is to where they stuff inside zone. And your front would be literally unstoppable. Right? Because they, I believe they have, you know, Pikachu abilities where... They just dominate inside zone runs, okay? Because when you get wide nine, you know, I would like to run inside zone because these guys are so wide, we get a double team and peel to the second level and et cetera. But if I could put an ability on you to where you just dominate against inside zone, well, then I could run a front that's weak in my eyes against inside zone, but then I can kind of cover that with Pikachu abilities on these two defenders. So I'm telling you right now, like, there's, there's, you can come up with a whole bunch of stuff in Mutt, I, I just refuse to do it. I'm not, you know. So someone, one of you guys said, you should put your uh, deep knockout KO on your corners and stuff. And I told him, bro, you know, hey, 
you know, I know, but I, I just can't bring myself down to do it because it's just kind of corny to me. I mean, yeah, some players are good at knocking out the ball, but the way Madden does it, it's so unrealistic, man. I've seen it where this guy is in deep zone, we run him off, and I have someone coming under it, and I throw the ball, and the second the input is used of me throwing the ball, he t whips around and jumps it and then just knocks the ball. It's just not realistic, man. It's so stupid. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. But, you know, I'm not knocking anybody that does. It's a video game, but, I, I you know, I just can't. So here I ran curl flat. That's just one of my gripes with Madden. It's just... Okay, right there I can tell he's running cover two zone. So when I run that HB draw, I'm always looking at the safeties. And I think he was running cover two zone. So again, I'm a no huddle guy. So I go back to it. And now I'm going to use something to attack cover two zone. I made a video on this play, but I varied from this play. I did it so quick. Where he's running like a deep in. If you turn this guy to a drag, it does so many different things that helps this attack against cover two. And a lot of different coverages. I, I originally, I first started doing this because I wanted to influence the middle user so he doesn't get in the window of this deep middle shot against cover two zone. You know, but what I noticed is with this route combination, the safety pulls into the deep middle of the field due to the influence of these routes going to the flat now and going inside. And then he comes late to defend the, the, the whole shot. So you, you add a little bit more opportunity to fit that in there. But I still throw the deep post from the front side. Okay. But we also keep the user influence with this. And I always pump it as well. It looks beautiful when you get used to it. I think I did it here. Play action. Oh, I tried to pump, but he did a, a weird reaction. But notice how he's held here because of this play. And the safety's drawn out due to the influence here. The window's right there. All right, man, we need to close this uh, Close this out. This is pretty bad. This might be my worst. At uh, Rants. So good for him. He scored. We could have maybe slowed that down and watched it, but, uh, you know, this video is kind of long, and he got a touchdown on me, so I'm not showing that. We're up 14 to 24. We're doing pretty decent. Um, this guy, oh, I remember this. I remember this. I was running, um, wow, this is, this keys right into, uh, well, no, not really. I was running a quarters personnel, very light in the box. And he surprised me. He was in bunch four strong. So I have a blitz to attack this from my quarter overload personnel uh, formation from uh, Baltimore. And that was my plan. He just ran the ball over and over and over. And he did it from no huddles. So I could not change the personnel. I would have to call a timeout. But I didn't want to call a timeout. I don't want to use my timeouts. Kudos to this guy. This guy was doing a very good job here, man. He ran, he ran it every play. And I just didn't want to change out, you know. It was like, oh, five yards, oh, four, six yards, oh, five yards. But that's what, you know, that's, that's great for running the ball. And as you can see... He was just coming down the field. He finally threw it. So, you know, solution to that, you don't want to call a timeout. Dummy, I should have just ran into a guy and got a false start. I mean, he's going to get to five yards anyway with the run. Run into him, get a false start, and then change personnel, right? But that's me being stubborn and not thinking and being dumb. But it is what it is. So he scored. Good job on him, man. Very good job. Um... Okay, this is cover two man again. Okay, it looks like he checked in the cover two zone. So I can tell you right away, I could stay in this play, but I, what I checked into PA tight end wheel, the same thing. Same thing. Fake, snap, pump. Look at the pump there. Look, you see how this backside safety is so far inside because of the influence of these routes? But he turns up late, right? So this window's here, but I always like throwing this post. Pump, 
Look how it held them just a bit there. Oh, I remember why I recorded this. Now I remember. I remember. So I'm like, I'm going to win this game, guys. I'm going to win this game. Pretty cool. And then... <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, please just don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. And it did. So I'll leave it at that, guys. I uh, hope you got something from this video. I thought, you know, that, that was a potential video to, to make a, a video on. But, you know, maybe not one of the best ones. But, you know, who knows? I may upload it. I may not. Hope you guys got something from this video. I hope you keep coming back for more, man. Peace.